I'm Interim Police Chief Donnie Williams, and today we want to give a brief summary of the crash and missing persons investigation surrounding the death of 27-year-old Stephanie Mayorga and 25-year-old Paige Escalera. Our deepest sympathies is with the families involved in these tragedies and families that have experienced other tragedies in our community. Our hope is that our results of our investigation will give some closure and understanding. We realize that the information we release today will not erase this devastating ordeal, but our hope is that it will give everyone a sense of what was happening the night of the crash, as well as during our missing persons investigation. Prior to the distribution of this video, we reached out to both families and offered the information in this presentation. We are aware of the tremendous interest in this case, and we believe that we should share as much information as possible. However, there is some information that is sensitive in nature, and we will not disclose out of respect for the families, and of course, there's some information that is protected by law. Today, I have with me Deputy Chief Alex Sotelo, who will summarize the missing persons investigation, as well as the traffic crash investigation. Deputy Police Chief Ben Kennedy will give an overview of the night of the crash and our response to the 911 call made on April the 15th. Throughout this presentation, we will show photos from the crash site, as well as a photo enhanced reenactment of the actual crash on April the 15th. We want to thank everyone who has helped with these investigations, as well as our partnering agencies, the Wilmington Fire Department, and New Hanover Regional EMS. On April 19th, Wilmington police were called to 376 South Kerr Avenue in reference to two missing women. The woman's roommate stated they were last seen on the night of April 15th and that she was under the impression you could not report missing persons until 72 hours had elapsed. A missing persons report was filed and investigators got to work. A search of the apartment revealed that women had left all of their property in the home including Paige's cell phone. They had also ordered food, which was discovered outside their door the following morning. All signs seem to indicate the couple intended to return home that night. Over the course of the next two weeks, the Wilmington Police Department's Criminal Investigation Division worked diligently to find the missing couple. Police reached out and received assistance from numerous area law enforcement agencies and Sable Airborne Unit and Marine One Boat Unit were utilized to search broad areas of interest in an effort to find the women's missing Dodge Dart. These searches were discussed, were focused in the area of Kerr Avenue apartment. Detectives interviewed family members, friends, co-workers, and past relations, which involved more than 1,600 man hours numerous phone and in-person interviews, and more than 100 tips from across the United States and internationally. They extensively searched both women's social media pages and phone records, as well as pages abandoned cell phone for any clues that could lead for their whereabouts. At the same time, the department received false leads, including a text from someone demanding money and claiming they had kidnapped the couple. On May 4th, police discovered a 911 call from the night of April 15th in which the caller stated he witnessed a car traveling at a high rate of speed and running a stop sign and crashing near the intersection of River Road and Independence, nearly six and a half miles from the woman's apartment. When police arrived on scene around 3 p.m. that afternoon, there were no obvious signs of a wreck. There were no broken limbs, no skid marks, and no debris. The only evidence of the crash was a faint tire imprint near the curb as well as scuff marks on the curb itself. The Dodge Dart was hidden in the area of thick vegetation, partially submerged in a swamp with only a small section of the roof visible from up above. Officers had to use a machete to cut a path to the vehicle. In addition, a tow truck was called to remove it, which created the tracks, broken limbs, and other obvious disturbances visible in photos taken at the scene after May the 4th. Once the car was in the open, two bodies were visible inside, both significantly decomposed. They were taken for an autopsy, and police immediately began a traffic investigation. Now that the investigation has been completed, we can confidently say alcohol and speed were major factors in the wreck. We believe the women were traveling west on Independence Boulevard 
facing 102 and 103 miles per hour when they hit the curve to the left at the Watermark Marina entrance and went airborne. The ground slopes down in the area, which put the Dodge Star 20 feet above ground level as it continued forward between the trees, traveling between 97 and 101 miles per hour. It is then hit the ground 115 feet away from the road and skidded forward into collided with the tree 150 feet off the roadway. The crash happened in the blink of an eye. From the time the vehicle hit the curve to the time of collision, only 0.99 seconds had elapsed. Data from the car's computer shows the driver hit the brake at the same moment the vehicle struck the curb, which explains the lack of skid marks. The car battery broke in half on impact, shutting off any lights or any sounds that could have alerted first responders to the crash. In addition, thick vegetation at the back of the car fully covered the taillights and prevented any reflection under a searchlight. Several open, empty beer bottles were discovered in the vehicle, and investigators were able to determine the women purchased a 12-pack of beer from a convenience store at 10.49 p.m., roughly one hour prior to the crash. Surveillance photos also show one of the women holding a beer bottle as they exited their apartment around 9 p.m. that night. Due to the level of decomposition, it is unlikely that a toxicology report will yield results. But based on this evidence, we are confident alcohol played a large role in the crash. Using dental records and visible tattoos, the medical examiner has identified Stephanie Mayorga as the driver and Paige Escalera as the passenger. The cause of death for both women has been ruled the result of traumatic head and chest injury sustained in the crash. We'll now have Deputy Chief Ben Kennedy present information on the 911 call that led to this discovery. On April 15th at approximately 11.54 p.m., a call came into the 911 center from a caller who was driving down Independence Boulevard away from River Road. He told dispatchers that he saw a car speeding past him going at a high rate of speed, running a stop sign, and then he looked at his passenger's side rear view mirror and saw the car hitting a wall and then crashing into the wooded area. The caller told dispatch that he was not from the area and was unsure where he was. At the same time, officers were in the area responding to an armed robbery and were looking for the suspect when they noticed the call for the crash was pending and dispatched themselves to the call. They arrived on scene along with the Wilmington Fire Department and New Hanover Regional Medical Center EMS. The caller remained on the scene and spoke with emergency responders about what he saw. When they began to inspect the area for damage, they found no skid marks, the wall had not been damaged, and there was no damage to the trees or brush in the area. Fire personnel used lights on the fire truck to illuminate the area. Officers were directed to expand their search and drive down opposite ends of River Road. There were a total of nine emergency responders at the scene, as well as the caller who aided in the search. During this time, a second armed robbery call went out over the radio, and then a shots fire call was dispatched minutes later, which turned into a homicide. The officers on scene left the area to respond to those calls. EMS and fire left the scene a few minutes later. Emergency personnel spent a total of about eight minutes on the scene before they left. No lights were seen. There was no smoke, noise, or anything coming from the crash site. 